One of the most barbaric and brutal kings of England was Henry VIII, who is best known for having six wives. Two of these lost their heads inside the Tower of London as an axeman and swordsman would perform the bloody roles of taking the heads of his wives. But Henry VIII in his final years put a huge amount of weight on and he would become rather restricted with injuries he had following a jousting accident which transformed his personality. The king had been smashed off of his horse in his thirties and following this he became rather tyrannical and his mood would shift sharply. This coincided with the executions of some of his friends, who he would condemn and then regret these actions. But in 1547, Henry VIII became ill early in the year, and he would succumb to this inside of his chambers in the Palace of Whitehall. However, Henry VIII, following his death, would be buried in a very small vault, which is not in keeping with his reputation and legacy. Today he still remains in this burial vault, despite his wishes being different. However, the vault of Henry VIII would be broken into a number of times, and with this the most infamous king of England was disturbed. On the 28th of January 1547, King Henry VIII died, and his death was one which was rather peaceful. He was attended on by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, and in the end the king slipped away, and he did acknowledge in his life that he had sinned a great deal. But following his death, the king's body was washed inside of his chambers, after it was left a few days before his demise was announced to the Parliament. With this, Edward VI was made king, but Henry VIII's heart and vital organs were removed, and these, it's believed, were then placed in lead caskets or vessels, which were buried in places separate from where his body was laid to rest. After this, the king's body was placed into a coffin, and it was then laid in state in the presence chamber of Whitehall Palace, and was surrounded by burning tapers, before it was moved on a huge procession to Windsor Castle, and the church within the castle's walls, St George's Chapel. Henry VIII stated in his will to his servants and family that he wanted to be buried with his third wife, Jane Seymour, who had died following giving birth to King Edward VI. Jane's demise inside of Hampton Court was very sad, and she never made it out of the place alive as she became sick in the days following giving birth to the heir. But Jane's death changed history forever, as despite giving the king everything he wanted, if she had recovered, then it's unlikely Henry would have had more wives. But her body, minus the heart, which had been buried in Hampton Court Chapel, was taken to St George's Chapel and was buried in a vault under the floor of the choir, showing her importance. But Henry decided that he wanted to be placed, to begin with, in this vault, before he wanted to be moved to a much larger and grander tomb, which would be placed inside of Westminster Abbey, alongside his father and mother's tomb. The tomb of Henry VIII was planned for many decades before he died, and he wanted this to be a large ornamental tomb which would be bigger and grander than his mother and father's. Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. Specifically, it would be a quarter bigger, and Italian sculptors tried to work on this, and Henry VIII did argue with them over the tomb's design. However, the king died before the tomb would be finished, and because of this, it was never completed, as his children would not invest a huge sum of money to finish it. But because of this, the king's dreams of being buried inside a grand memorial would never occur. The coffin of Henry VIII after his death and embalming was then taken on a huge procession from Whitehall Palace to Windsor Castle. The procession was four miles long, and roads had to be widened to allow it to pass by and the hearse carried the coffin of the king, which was pulled by horses who had been draped in black cloth. But on the coffin was a wax effigy of Henry VIII, covered in jewels and his clothes. This was for many people who witnessed the procession, the first time they had seen an image of their king and what he looked like, and the crown was also placed on the coffin. The funeral procession moved towards Sion Abbey, and it was then rested for the evening to have a break, And there have been rumours in the past centuries that whilst it was here, the king's body exploded and that parts of Henry dripped out of the coffin and then this was licked at by dogs.
This may have been caused by the gases building up in the body after death, and this is known to occur. But after the evening, the journey continued on to the burial site, and the coffin of Henry VIII reached Windsor, and it was then carried into the church by 16 yeomen of the guard. Such was the weight of Henry's coffin. The funeral service of Henry VIII then occurred, and his coffin was then lowered into the vault where it still remains 500 years on. His officers of the household broke their staves of office and threw these into the vault after the coffin, but the burial vault would, throughout the centuries, be disturbed a number of times. Today there is no pomp or ceremony regarding the king's burial site, and it's just a simple marble slab showing where Henry VIII is buried. It says, In a vault beneath this marble slab are deposited the remains of Jane Seymour, Queen of King Henry VIII, 1537. King Henry VIII, 1547, King Charles I, 1648, and an infant child of Queen Anne. This memorial was placed here by command of King William IV, 1837, but Henry VIII was disturbed a number of times, mostly to bury the others inside of the vault with him, and he would be buried next to someone who he would consider his greatest enemy. The most important person inside of the burial vault after Henry VIII is King Charles I, who was placed next to Henry's coffin. King Charles was a steward, and Henry VIII during his reign would bar the Stuarts from ever becoming the kings of England. But after his daughter Elizabeth I had no children or heirs, the Stuarts became also the rulers of England. But Charles I is remembered in history for being one of the most brutal and shocking kings who threw his country into civil war. The English Civil War is known as the bloodiest conflict ever fought in England, but Charles I would be placed on trial after the defeat and he would then be condemned to death, before his head was taken off on Whitehall by an executioner. But because of the furore regarding Charles I and the hostility towards this action, Parliament tried to make sure that they buried Charles I in a quiet place, especially because they were worried that royalists would dig him up and venerate him as a martyr. Because of this, Charles I was quietly buried in Henry VIII's vault, and the vault of Henry VIII was actually rather full, with just Henry and his wife Jane in there. When it came to burying Charles, to get his coffin in, workers had to move Henry's to the side, and it's believed they may have actually damaged this and damaged some of the wood of the Tudor king's coffin. But also another Stuart would be added to this vault, and that was one child born to Queen Anne, the last Stuart monarch, who was buried also at the feet of Henry VIII in a small coffin, this meant that to lay the enemies of the Tudor monarch in the vault, the vault was broken into. But then again in 1813, the vault would be broken into yet again, as building work was being carried out inside of St George's Chapel and the Royal Vault. The builders entered the vault containing the remains of Henry VIII, but then officials went further and they opened the coffin of King Charles I to see what was inside of it and the Prince Regent, the future George IV, also oversaw this. However, they noticed that Henry's coffin was in a bad state and had been broken. The trestle it had been sat on was broken and had collapsed, and this was done when Charles's coffin was squeezed in. The pressure from within the body of Henry was also said to have splintered the wood, and the top of the coffin had allegedly split open but there was no record of any work being done to move Henry into another coffin, which was more suitable, meaning his body may be exposed to the air still today. However, Henry VIII was one of the most notorious and evil kings that had ever ruled England, but he was buried in a quiet place where he did not want to remain forever. He still lies under the floor of the chapel in Windsor, and not in the great tomb that he wanted, but surely his reputation means he deserves a grander monument and tomb than he currently has, as if you visit Windsor today, it is very easy to walk past his burial vault. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.